Hello friends, today I Vikas Kumar Tyagi is going to give a presentation on an overview to cluster analysis. It is the first part. The second part or the second presentation which follow after some time. This is the overview of the presentation. It's command in SPSS, primary basic cases to explain it better, introduction, applications, and characteristics will be followed by its different types that is hierarchical and non-hierarchical cluster. Major differences from factor analysis as they look similar, its command in SS, references used for the presentation and in the end the discussion session. <coughs> Before we start further, I would like to show you the command in SPSS for cluster analysis. It is relatively simpler than the factor analysis which we discussed in last presentation. This generally follows factor analysis and is followed by discriminant analysis. You find it, you find it in classify section under analysis as you can see here. Three types of cluster analysis are there in SPSS that is two-step clustering, k-means clustering and hierarchical clustering which I will discuss in subsequent slides. Cluster analysis can be <coughs> in the cases or variables but generally we use cluster analysis for cases and factor analysis for variables. <coughs> Before explaining it further I would like to discuss a case. Imagine that the list of a student with marks in physics and mathematics. Graph 1 plots the points and graph 2 which is shown here forms the clusters. Here x-axis represents marks in physics score and y-axis represents marks in math scores. The object of the groups are homogeneous within and heterogeneous across. Clusters in this case can be called as studious groups, average group and attention required group. Can you imagine who are the students who are in studious group? Yes, ABC. And the other two groups are XYZ, PQR. <coughs> This is an example of just 9 cases and 2 dimensions or variables. In case where number of variables and cases becomes very large, then cluster analysis techniques help. Now I will introduce the cluster analysis. <coughs> cluster is a collection of objects which are similar between them and are dissimilar to the objects belonging to other clusters. Few types are exclusive and non-exclusive clusters. In non-exclusive cluster points may belong to multiple clusters. The next is fuzzy and non-fuzzy clusters. In fuzzy clusters a point belongs to every cluster with some weight between 0 and 1 where total weight must be sum to 1. <coughs> cluster analysis is a multivariate statistical process of organizing objects into groups whose members are similar in some way. In this similarities between data are found according to the characteristics of the data and grouping of similar objects into cluster is done. Example how the books are segregated in the library. Clustering process is where when raw data is there <coughs> like in this case A, B, 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 A, B uh, on which clustering algorithm is run, for example, k-mean algorithm, leading to the formation of clusters of data as given in the example A, A and B, B, B. And if we further follow it through the k-mean algorithm, then the new cluster would be found and there, those four clusters would be the capital A, small a, capital B and small b. <coughs> Coming to the applications of cluster analysis. Cluster analysis helps in data reduction, as in summarization, compression, and data mining, hypothesis generation, testing and framing foundations for future research, outlier detection and in data cleaning, marketing research, as in understanding consumers, consumer profiling, and segmentation. World Wide Web as in search engine optimization, financial planning as in grouping stocks with similar price fluctuations, 
social network analysis as Twitter do cluster analysis of consumers on the basis of their tweets and use this information in research. Biological sciences like in taxonomy and in grouping genotypes. Prediction based on the groups like decision <coughs> deciding future clusters and in pattern recognitions, etc. Now the basic characteristics of cluster analysis. <coughs> There is no dependent variable. We just have an input parameter or variable based on which a natural group is developed. Doesn't have objective function. Unlike decision tree where you have the objective function or dependent variable. Deals with different kind of attributes. Any kind of numerical, categorical and binary data can be used. However, having a mixture of different types of variable will make the analysis more complicated. Because in cluster analysis, you need to have some way of measuring the distance between observations and the type of measure used will depend on what type of data you have. <laughs> Example, age is in number of years, height is in number of centimeters, income is in rupees. <coughs> the notion of cluster analysis can be very ambiguous as same data can be divided into different number of clusters depending upon the researchers. As here you can see, the uh, the first researcher the divided the whole clusters, the whole group into six clusters, second into two clusters, and the third into four clusters. Depending, it's very, <coughs> it could be very ambiguous. Cluster analysis is very subjective in nature. To prove it, let's see the example below. Into how many clusters can you divide the following movies? <coughs> Probably two. Or one. Two clusters if we consider on the basis of title, but if we include contents of the book that is fictional nature, <coughs> then only single group. Hence cluster analysis is very subjective in nature. <coughs> now the most important part of the presentation that is the type of cluster analysis. I have covered only the most important ones mentioned in SPSS as shown in the first slide. Hierarchical method, which is of two types, that is agglomerative method, divisive method. Non-hierarchical method, in which most prominent technique used is k-mean cluster. And in the end, two-step two step cluster. Main clustering methods or algorithm are hierarchical and non-hierarchical clustering. In hierarchical clustering, it moves progressively to create a hierarchy of solutions. Whereas in non-hierarchical clustering, elements are divided into non-overlapping sets where k is predetermined. Whereas in hierarchical clustering, no predefined decision about the number of cluster or assumptions on the number of cluster is taken. Non-hierarchical clustering faster and more reliable process and doesn't have problems when data contain a high level of error and can even work on large data set. Hence, non-hierarchical clustering is usually used in the researches. <coughs> Dendrogram and scree plot helps in hierarchical clusters and in its major examples are agglomerative and divisive. Whereas, examples of non-hierarchical clustering is k-means clustering. Now, discussing the types of hierarchical clustering methods. Agglomerative or is also called as bottom up approach. You can see in these pictures and relate what I am speaking about the methods. Agglomerative method starts with each object forming a separate group with each point as individual clusters. At each step merge the closest pair of the cluster until one cluster is left. Here subjects start in their own separate cluster. <coughs> the two clusters most similar clusters are then combined and this is done repeatedly until all subjects are in one cluster. And the add, the optimal number of cluster is then chosen out of all cluster solutions. Agglomerative methods are used more often than the divisive methods. Divisive methods is also called as top-down approach, where we start with all the objects in the same cluster. Start with one all-inclusive cluster. At each step, <coughs> Split a cluster until each cluster contains a point. Here all subjects starts in the same cluster. Clustering strategy is applied in reverse until every subject is in a separate cluster. <coughs> now how distance is measured between two clusters? It's measured through linkage function. 
is all about how you calculate distance between two cluster that is intermediate cluster distance a single linkage where distance <coughs> between two cluster closest objects from both the objects is measured it's also called as min as given in the picture one complete linkage where distance between two farthest point is measured also called as the max which is shown as the by the largest large <coughs> a longer line and by using several other methods the intermediate distance can be measured which helps to understand now coming to the euclidean distance which we learned in basic mathematics class helps in measuring distance between two objects i have also mentioned below the similar simplified version of it for better understanding considering two points with coordinates given the distance is calculated <coughs> coming to the scree plot which helps in hierarchical clustering is given below <coughs> here a plot of number of clusters and sum of within cluster variance is mentioned below which helps in hierarchical clustering if there if there is just one cluster the variance is 32 if two clusters are formed then the total variance will reduce to 16 and so on at total cluster 3 we get elbow point which tells us the optimum number of cluster we should take <coughs> dendrogram showing how cluster is forming in each step which can also help in hierarchical clustering is given below the y axis shows the variation and the x axis is showing the number of as showing the cases it tells how groups are combining and forming the cluster <coughs> case 1 and 3 were closest or most similar and then 2 and 5 and which was similar to case 4 and so on came in clustering which is a non hierarchical approach is the most popular clustering technique where we decide k the number of clusters that are needed finally afterwards k mean algorithm process is followed here step 1 partition of the whole data set or whole objects into k non empty subsets is done that is done through randomly <coughs> then we calculate the seed points which is also called as centroids mean points for each of the clusters assign each object or observation to the nearest seed point and the step 4 again go to step 2 and step 3 and stop when arrangement doesn't change or centroids remain relatively stable <coughs> measures like silhouette bells f and cubic clustering criteria can be used to determine the proper number of clusters literature review or according to the demands can also help in deciding the number of clusters now the last approach that is two step cluster it is mixed of both non hierarchical and hierarchical cluster first step used in non hierarchical and second step is hierarchical clustering in nature here both categorical the example gender and metric variable example income can be used in two step cluster <coughs> how cluster analysis is different from the factor analysis very important question as results of both are somewhat subjective and similar all the cluster analysis and factor analysis may sound similar on the surface they are very different cluster analysis is a technique that used to classify objects or cases into relatively homogeneous groups called clusters whereas factor analysis mainly used for data reduction such as reducing the length of the question or redesigning of a question factor analysis attempts to form features to group features <coughs> cluster analysis grouping is based on the distance proximity whereas factor analysis grouping is based on patterns and variations correlations in cluster analysis we group people based on the reasons to several variables whereas we group variable based on people's response to those variables in factor analysis in cluster analysis when data size increases it becomes difficult to execute cluster analysis whereas factor analysis is free from complexity of large data size variables in factor analysis must have some correlations whereas in <coughs> cluster analysis is free from such assumptions 
most important example suppose is a suppose a group of people answer a bunch of question about say politics opinions on various politicians though on issues etc ignoring all the messy details a cluster analysis would try to identify group of people the group might have labels like conservative libertarian liberal environmentalist and so on a factor analysis would try to come up with measures of latent variables such as liberalness etc <laughs> so cluster analysis means libertarian and factor analysis will lead to liberalness <clears throat> this picture shows the clusters and factor analysis in rows and columns to elaborate more example we discuss variables such as at attends loud parties talk a lot appears comfortable interacting with anyone is usually seen with others all of these variables could be measuring the central concept or factor of outgoing whereas young couples young families older families pre retirement and retired are the clusters based on demographic variables cluster analysis command in stress Although we are not discussing it in very much detail, as we will be discussing the practical implications of cluster analysis in for subsequent presentations, but for the basic knowledge, I am telling that for hierarchical clustering, proc cluster is the command to be used in CES. For k-mean clustering, non-hierarchical proc frast plus command is used in CES. These are the examples. These are some of the important papers. which can be referred for cluster analysis and which was used in this particular presentation thank you i would request you to like and subscribe my channel and you can contact me on my email id vikas.dtyagi.15 at the gmail.com for any queries or suggestion which you can provide to improve this presentation thank you